In a war defined by tanks and aircraft, artillery also decided the outcome of battles. Yet behind every shell fired was a story of innovation, of nations racing to perfect the science of destruction. The Soviet 122mm howitzer M1938 is purpose-built artillery designed for mass warfare. It was born from the philosophy that quantity has a quality all its own. To achieve this, Soviet engineers prioritized simplicity and durability over complexity. Key technological innovations directly address the realities of the Eastern Front, a simple, forgiving, interrupted screw breach, and a robust hydropneumatic recoil system ensured reliability with minimal maintenance, allowing hastily trained crews to operate it effectively. Its revolutionary, wide-spoked wheels were a direct solution to the unforgiving terrain, preventing the 2,500-kilogram weapon from sinking in deep mud and snow. Stability was provided by a split-trail carriage, which also gave it a wide 49-degree traverse. This focus on simplified standardized components enabled staggering production numbers, with over 17,500 units produced during World War II alone. The howitzer's 11.8-kilometer maximum range, combined with a 6 rounds per minute rate of fire, gave it substantial firepower. Its impact extended to the Cold War, where it was exported and used globally. The 152mm gun howitzer M1937 ML20 was one of the most powerful and influential Soviet artillery pieces of World War II. Designed under FF Petrov, it was technologically groundbreaking as the first heavy, core-level artillery piece successfully mounted on a tank chassis, creating the world's first true heavy assault gun, the Su-52. It combined the traits of both a howitzer and a gun, allowing for both high-angle indirect fire and direct flat trajectory fire. This dual-purpose flexibility made it vital for the Red Army's deep battle doctrine to crush fortifications and support breakthroughs with long-range destructive fire. It fired 43.6 kilogram shells at 655 meter per second, giving it exceptional penetration and blast effect. Production began in 1937 and lasted until 1946, with nearly 7,500 towed units built, plus about 4,000 barrels used for self-propelled variants like the Su-52 and the Isu-52. Despite its heavy weight, the ML-20's reliability, versatility, and raw power made it one of the Red Army's most respected weapons. It was used extensively by Soviet forces, later adopted by captured users, and exported post-war. Originally devised for smoke and chemical rolls, Nebelwerfer evolved into a mass-produced multiple-launch rocket system that delivered high-explosive rockets in rapid salvos to saturate targets. The Nebelwerfer represented a major leap in rocket artillery with fin stabilized design using angled exhaust vents that caused the rocket to rotate rapidly in flight, which allowed gyroscopic stability. Another key feature was the strategic placement of the warhead behind the motor and venturi, designed to detonate slightly above the ground. This configuration maximized fragmentation over a wide area. The Nebelwerfer also utilized an advanced electrical firing system that allowed for rapid salvo launches with precise timing control. The Nebelwerfer family included three main towed models, including the 15cm NBW-41 with six barrels, and the largest is the 30cm NBW-42 that packed 50kg warheads. The Nebelwerfer's development and design features, such as spin stabilization, multiple tubes, and enhanced mobility, significantly influenced post-war tube-launched rocket artillery systems globally, securing its symbolic importance as part of Germany's wartime artillery legacy. The Ordnance QF 25-pounder was the workhorse of British and Commonwealth armies. Being a versatile gun howitzer, it served in all major theaters from 1940 onwards. It blended the best of both worlds, combining the direct fire accuracy of a gun with the high-angle trajectory of a howitzer for superior battlefield versatility. Its revolutionary circular platform allowed for a full 360-degree traverse without repositioning the trails. This enabled rapid response and unprecedented flexibility in combat situations. Weighing just about 1,600 kilograms, the 25-pounder gun was highly mobile and could be rapidly deployed. It was adaptable to various roles, from indirect fire to anti-tank defense. 
Engineered for high performance, it fired a 25-pound shell at 6 to 8 rounds per minute with vertical sliding block breech and hydropneumatic recoil system. As the primary field artillery for British and Commonwealth divisions, over 12,000 were produced. Variants of 25-pounder gun included the short Mark II and self-propelled versions like the Bishop and Sexton. The 25-pounder service extended into the 1970s with Commonwealth nations. Its successful gun howitzer design influenced subsequent artillery development for decades to come. The American 105mm howitzer M2A1, and later known as the M101, was the backbone of U.S. divisional artillery, with over 10,000 units produced in 1953. Its revolutionary fire direction center was the first fully integrated command system in World War II, enabling centrally controlled, rapid and precise coordinated fire from multiple batteries. M101 batteries often employed the time-on-target tactic, coordinated fire from multiple artillery pieces to have all shells impact the target simultaneously for devastating psychological and physical effect. It was able to fire 105mm rounds with VT proximity fuse that had a small built-in radio transmitter to detonate shells mid-air for maximum effectiveness. The M101 105mm howitzer fired a 15kg high-explosive round up to 11,270 meters with a high rate of fire and versatile ammunition capabilities. It boasts an enduring legacy, serving in major conflicts from World War II to Vietnam and used by over 70 countries. The Soviet 76mm divisional gun M1942 or ZIS-3 was a popular wartime design, with over 100,000 units produced during World War II. Vasily Grabin's revolutionary design philosophy prioritized mass production from the start, combining proven components to drastically cut manufacturing time and cost. The ZIS-3 smartly integrated the powerful 76.2mm F-22 barrel with the light and mobile ZIS-2 57mm carriage for superior performance. Unlike other artillery pieces, the ZIS-3 simplified manufacturing techniques like casting, stamping, and welding to ensure unprecedented production scale, which made it the most numerous Soviet field gun of the war. Its true dual-purpose roles provided exceptional tactical flexibility, serving as both a field gun for infantry support and a capable anti-tank defense system. The ZIS-3's performance set a new standard, offering a superior balance of mobility, a longer range than its allied counterparts, and strategic flexibility. After the war, the ZIS-3 service continued into the Cold War era with many Eastern Bloc nations, leaving a lasting legacy of its effective design. The Katushka rocket launcher was the world's first effective self-propelled multiple rocket launcher that revolutionized World War II artillery tactics with massive firepower and mobility. Its revolutionary truck-mounted design allowed the shoot-and-scoot capability, giving crews the ability to fire a full salvo and relocate within minutes, ensuring high survivability. The Katushka pioneered saturation bombardment, overwhelming large areas with massive firepower in seconds, prioritizing shock and psychological impact over pinpoint accuracy. Simple and cost-effective to manufacture, over 10,000 Katushka launchers and 12 million rockets were produced. The mobile Katushka came in multiple calibers and was mounted on various platforms, delivering mass firepower for tactical operations. The terrifying, distinctive howling noises spread immense psychological fear and demoralized Axis troops, breaking their will before the first rocket even hit. The Katushka's concept left a lasting post-war legacy, directly influencing the development of modern multiple-launch rocket systems used globally today. The German 88mm flat gun was arguably World War II's most famous artillery piece, renowned for its versatility. It featured a revolutionary dual-purpose design against both air and ground targets. Its high-velocity rounds stemmed from the long L-56 barrel, which ensured flat trajectory. This granted exceptional long-range accuracy and the kinetic energy needed to penetrate heavily armored targets. The 88mm dual-purpose gun was a planned tactical innovation. It provided commanders with the flexibility to rapidly redeploy guns from anti-aircraft defense to potent ground combat roles.
Its innovative cruciform mount was an engineering marvel, providing a stable platform with a 360-degree traverse and rapid two-minute deployment. As a truly multi-role weapon system, the 88's design allowed it to excel in anti-aircraft, anti-tank, and field artillery roles, supported by ammunition for different types of target. The 88mm's impact on warfare was profound. Its success as an anti-tank weapon and on the Tiger I tank forced the Allies to drastically increase their armor protection and gun calibers. With over 20,000 units produced, its concept of a high-velocity dual-purpose gun heavily influenced post-war tank and artillery design globally. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos.